Okay, so at the Blender conference this year, I saw a great workshop by Kyle Johnson, and he made an add-on which is called Sky Splat, which is intended to streamline the process of creating Gaussian splats from drone footage. I've done a lot of testing of this method and picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. And in this video, we're going to take a piece of footage and use the add-on to go through the process of generating a Gaussian splat. I'll put a link in the description, but I'm going to go over here to the GitHub page. I'm going to go over to the releases section, and I'm going to download this version here, which is for Windows. I'm going to save that to my disk. I'm going to load up Blender 5, and without unzipping it, I'm just going to drag it into the Blender user interface, and then I'm going to press OK. And so now if you go over to this little tab on the right hand side, or if you press the shortcut N, you should see that there is a tab called Sky Splat. So let's expand this section and we're going to add a new video instance. So I'm going to press this plus icon here and I'll put a link to this footage in the description, but we're going to be using this video of a lighthouse as our source footage. So what I'm going to do is go over here to the video file section, click on the folder icon, and I'm going to load up the lighthouse video, which you can see in the folder here. So press accept. And then the next thing we need to do is load that video. So I'm going to press load video and SRT. So you can see here that Skysplat has determined that we need to have a frame step of about 28 in order to achieve about 150 images from this footage. This will vary slightly and you can tweak it to make it higher or lower. So the next thing I'm going to do is press extract frames and it's going to go through that footage and extract all of the frames into a new folder. And so when that's done you should see a window popping up with all of your frames and this folder is also saved next to your footage. Okay, so now I'm going to collapse this section of the add-on and I'm going to expand the section that says structure from motion. And in order to use this section of the add-on, we need to point it to an installation of the software Colmap. So I'll put a link in the description, but what we want to do is go over here to the releases section, Colmap x64 Windows CUDA, and I'm going to save that to my disk. And then I'm going to go over to the place where that Colmap zip file was downloaded and I'm going to extract it. And the file that we want to point the add-on to is located in this folder here called bin. If you go into that folder you should see a list of other files and one of them is called colmap.exe. So that's the file that we want to reference. So I'm going to copy the path of this bin folder. I'm going to go over to the add-on colmap section, click on the folder icon and I'm going to paste in that bin folder. And then if I search for colmap, .exe, you should see the file colmap.exe. Click on that and then press accept. So I'm going to go over here to where it says window. I'm going to go to toggle system console and I'm going to put it in the corner of my screen here. And then I'm going to have my project window up here. And now we're going to press this button that says run colmap. And you can see here in the console window that the colmap process has started and also that a new folder has been created in the project. Okay, so when it's finished, you should see a message that says Colmap Processing completed successfully. And in my case, this took 432 seconds. Yours may be faster, it may be slower. It depends how fast your computer is, it depends how many images you have, and it depends on the resolution of the images. And sometimes you just get lucky. So now that this is completed, we can go back over here to the add-on panel, and we can scroll down to this section where it says Load Colmap Model. So I'm going to click that, and now you can see that that we have this point cloud and a bunch of cameras. So I'm just gonna maximize Blender now. And what we can do now is we can transform this point cloud. So first of all, I'm going to click on the default cube and delete it. And then I'm going to select this Colmap root object, which is the parent for all of the photogrammetry objects in the scene. And I'm gonna to go to the side view by pressing on the X axis here. And then with my Colmap root object selected, I'm gonna press R to rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it until the ground is level. And if I zoom in a bit here, I think that this blob is the lighthouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my parent object up a little bit so that my lighthouse is roughly on the ground. And then I'm going to press the Y axis button here and then view it from the other angle. And that looks pretty good. I think that's a relatively good orientation. You can see this big circle of cameras here is the orbit that the original drone photographer took. So so with this in approximately the right orientation, I can now go over here to where it says export transformed model. And so when I click on export transformed model, 
it's going to update this coal map folder here. And another thing that I can do is I can press this option here to create a camera animation from the frames of my footage. So if I press that, you should see that you get a new camera object here, which is called animated camera. And that camera is going to move around the scene as the footage progresses. And the final step within the structure from motion section of the add-on is to create the brush data set, which we'll use to train the Gaussian splat. And so we just need to click here to do that prepare brush data set. Um, and if you look inside of this folder here inside of the project, you can see that there is a new folder created. So now inside of the add-on, we can close this tab and we can open up the final tab, which is the Gaussian splatting section. So I'm going to expand that and we can keep all of these defaults the same. And we can just go down to this button here where it says run brush training. And if I click on run brush training, you can see that the brush app launches and we start to see a visualization of our Gaussian splat being created in real time. And what's going on here is that my computer is creating thousands and thousands of Gaussian splats and then it's adjusting them and refining them based on the photographs in the original data set. So if I click on this little icon here, I can cycle through the images that comprise the original data set. Okay, so now that we're at 5,000 training steps, we can see that we've got some really nice detail in the rocks, in the water, and in the architecture of the lighthouse. You can see we have individual steps here going up to the lighthouse, which is really, really nice. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here to the scene controls, and I'm going to press this export button here. And I'm going to save this PLY file into my project folder. So I'm going to press save, and then I'm going to close the brush app, and that will stop it from running. So just a quick note about something I realized after recording the tutorial and that's that brush will save versions of the Gaussian splat in this folder which is called brush output and by default it will save a version every 5000 training steps so you don't technically need to export it from the app you can just let it run. Okay, so now in order to import that Gaussian splat into Blender, we need to use some kind of Gaussian splat viewer, and I'd recommend using the Kiri 3DGS render add-on. So I'll put a link in the description again, but you can go over here to releases and you can download the latest version. So save that to your disk. And when that's finished downloading, you can click on the zip file and drag it into the Blender user interface. Then press OK to install the add-on, and you should see a tab appearing here called 3D GS Render. And now we're ready to import the PLY into Blender. So I'm going to click on Import PLY. I'm going to navigate over to my folder and I'm going to select this PLY, press Import. And if I just maximize Blender here, you should see that you now have a much more extensive point cloud inside of your scene. Now we can't see the Gaussian splat yet because we're not in the correct preview mode. But if I go over here to the Kiri add on and press Render, you should see that the Gaussian splat appears. And if I now zoom in to the middle, of my scene, we can see that we have the Gaussian splat of the lighthouse inside of Blender. And what I'm going to do is select the original point cloud, and then I'm going to just press H to hide it. And there we go, you can see the lighthouse which has come into the Blender scene and it's looking really, really nice. You can see there that we've got lots of nice detail. Also, if I go over to the object which I created earlier, the animated camera, I click on that and then if I press control number pad zero, we can go inside of that camera and if I press play here on the play controls, you can see that that camera is going to orbit in the same path as the original footage. And if I shift click on the core map root object here, I can hide all of those individual cameras and I can just focus on the scene. And so this is great. We've got our Gaussian splat into Blender and we can also render it. So if I go over to the render option here, if we just leave this in the default and press render, we can see that in our temporary directory, we get a frame that has been rendered. That's just the color pass. And if I go over here to the output properties and set my frame range to about 10, 
I can press this option here, which is render animation, and I can render an animated sequence. So if I hit render again, and then go over to my temporary directory, we should see that one by one, the frames start to appear in this folder. And if your Gaussian splat disappears like this, you can go back to edit mode and then return to the render button and your Gaussian splat should reappear. Add-ons like Sky Splat make this whole process a lot easier. So thanks very much to Carl Johnson for making and maintaining this add-on. And yeah, have fun with it.